Now I'm going to briefly introduce our speaker today, Zachary Shuren. Shuren is currently the senior font developer at uh, Adobe Japan, although due to COVID, he is still stuck here in California. Um, he had a somewhat circuitous route to his current career in type design. Early in life, he became fascinated by the Rosetta Stone, and he went on to learn an annoyingly large number of languages, including German, Japanese, French, Italian, Swedish, Mandarin, Russian, Ancient Greek, Latin, and Arabic. In college, he trained to be a film producer. And like many film students, he followed his dream to Hollywood, where he did find work doing title sequences. His claim to fame, he did the title sequences for all the Twilight movies. But he found he was looking at letters day in and day out, and eventually he realized that the letters were his passion. So he quit Hollywood to study type design at Reading in England, and he never looked back. So welcome, Zachary Sharon. Thank you, thank you. Uh, this is great. Uh, let's see, am I? This is working. It's first time doing this kind of setup, so it's interesting. But. Uh, you're on, Zachary. Share your screen if you want. Oh, I'll, I'll share in a second. It's it's great to have everybody join today, and um, I'm really happy that we could do it through Zoom because I was able to invite a lot of people that I know who I've worked with on various writing systems. And uh, we have Vinod, who I've been in touch with about many scripts, and I'll, uh, I'll share a link to his website, which is amazing it's an amazing site for helping with so many things about so many different writing systems and uh he's helped me so much in learning about writing systems and how to create these fonts how to understand these systems um another friend who the only one i've met actually in person is sunita who's in nepal she got to go to a type i last year and present on ranjana scripts so that's a video also that you should check out if you haven't seen it. And we'll, we'll have the link for that too. Uh, she can also speak a little bit about uh, the writing systems of Nepal. Uh, another person we have joined today is Mangu Purti, who's a, a whole language, uh, Waranchiti script. Uh, that's his, his native script. And he has been the main one doing things, working on the whole Wikipedia making fonts, promoting the script. And uh, I worked with him on the recent Noto Waranchiti. So he, we used his font. That's the new Noto Waranchiti font is designed by him. And we just submitted that to Google a couple of weeks ago. So we're waiting for that to get into Android, hopefully soon. And I had asked uh, Bivudi Chakma, to join, he said he couldn't join, and he recommended uh, Kitty Bante Chakma, who is is also joining here. Uh, I haven't met, so thank thank you for joining. And uh, everybody who was was able to join, uh, I'd like them to speak too, because just me talking about this is like what a, it can be boring. And what what do I know? Like these these people are living these scripts. These are their history, their culture, their writing systems. So. I want to give them the chance to talk about these. And let's see, first, uh, let's get started with the slides now. And okay, so first things first, I wanted to point out a few things that are happening right now. And these links are also in the link shared in the chat. So you can go to my my website I set up yesterday, punchcutter.github.io, and that has links to these. The one thing is the alphabets. I encourage everybody to read this time to act uh, blog post from the alphabets, which was just put up uh, two days ago, I think. And it's totally relevant to the discussion here today. Uh, the, we, it's a call to action to uh, help promote, help uh, include people 
who are underrepresented around the world in type design and design in general. I think uh, this is absolutely relevant to what we're going to look at today. And it's a perfect timing because I was already inviting these people to come join and talk about their writing systems. So I think that's an important topic that everybody should look at and get involved with. Uh, another one is the Before and Beyond Typography Conference happening right now, which you can, it's free. You can go here and register and see some really interesting talks. And it's, go, it's going on for, I think, another month or so. So every week there will be three, three, or three talks or so, and you can view those and comment and see some cool stuff about uh, letter forms that are before and beyond typography. It's a, so check that out. Uh, another thing ongoing right now is the Endangered Alphabet Project open house presentation series. So Tim Brooks is working right now on a lot of, uh, he, he does these wood carvings for different writing systems. So you can check, go check that out and look at some of the talks that he's doing. Uh, tomorrow he's actually talking about Chakma also. So we'll look at Chakma script today. And then after that, you can go check out his thing tomorrow and see some more information about Chakma. And the last one on here happening now or happening this week is the typographics type lab which for the first time it's online. And this week there will be a lot of things also related to what we're looking at today, which are writing systems from around the world. There will be type critiques for various writing systems. Uh, there'll be some interesting things going on. There's, the list is too long. So go to the website, check it out, see, hope you can find something interesting there. And let's see. So today's talk, how to kill a writing system. Well, I, I don't want to kill any writing systems, and I hope none of you do, but I thought that this was a, a good title because it's, it's stronger than saying like, how should we save a writing system or what can we do to revive a writing or, you know, how to kill a writing system came directly from this book, how to kill a city. If, if you don't know the book, it's, it's been on my mind for years since I read it. And it's about gentrification, which is also totally relevant here. So I think I must have <laughs> removed that slide or I put it later. <laughs> Sorry. So this is what we get with a lot of writing systems today. You get boxes because there are no fonts. There's nothing encoded yet. There's nothing in the computing system to display these fonts, to display these letters. What we really want is to see something more like this, which also, if you're expert in any of these, you will also notice issues here and there. It's not always the best representation, but I think this is a lot better than this. So we're moving forward, we're trying to do more, and that's what I wanna talk about today. Oh, I put this out of order, sorry. This slide is the book that I meant, that I took the title from. And even this title, Gentrification, Inequality, and the Fight for the Neighborhood is, we're talking about writing systems, but we're talking about the same ideas, the power structure, people, the majority groups coming in, overpowering, pushing out minority writing systems, pushing out minority languages, suppressing them, uh, making, you know, pushing them out of existence in some cases. And of course, what we really want to look at is why does that happen and how can we change that? So we're focusing today on computing. So writing systems can still exist. They can exist in the world and on paper and by hand and in so many ways. But these days, if it's not in the computer, then it's a lot more difficult to send this information back and forth to process this information or to use this information in, in uh, various ways. So what I'm looking at here is the Unicode standard 
And this is, this is the boilerplate description of what Unicode is. So if you don't know what Unicode is, basically it's the structure on computers that is used to display uh, letter forms. That's, that's the, the easy description. And also looking at the Noto project, which is an insane huge project by Google, which has been going on for I think eight or nine years now. It's been it's been a while. And what's crazy about it is it's trying to make a font or a font family that includes every single thing that's in Unicode. And it's a moving target because every year more things are added, more things are updated. And and hopefully that's what, what we want is to keep adding more, to keep updating, to keep improving things. So the project just keeps going and keeps going. And some of what we'll look at today is the Noto project and how that has been the first font to be widely used or to be widely available. Right now, these are the scripts that are in Unicode. So these are some, and here's some more. And then there are, are still hundreds that aren't in Unicode, like all these and all these. So people are working on these, trying to get more and more into Unicode, trying to support, especially minority writing systems, minority languages around the world. And it takes time, it takes money, it takes energy, it takes people, first of all. And the people are the most important thing, which is the one reason I wanted to invite all these people that I've been in touch with who have been working to promote these scripts, to revive these scripts and uh, have helped me to understand what that means and help me to help them in my position as you know, uh, Western, working in California, working in this tech industry, working at Monotype, now at Adobe, like I'm in a position to do something. So it's my responsibility to do that and listen to these people and hopefully keep moving forward with this. So today, the scripts that I want to look at are Wancho, Waranchiti, Chakma, Newa, Sharada, and Granta. So for Wancho, I invited Banwang Losu, who is the creator of the Wancho script. And I haven't heard back from him. I'm not sure. Usually he's in touch uh, quickly. And we've, we've chatted a lot over the last half year, maybe. Uh, it's been a while. We've, we've been working together on the Noto font because I wanted to make sure that what goes into Android the font that's in there is the best it can be. I wanted his approval as the creator of the script. So I worked with him and made sure that he was 100% okay with everything about it. So we worked together and we, we still chat and I'll show you more about him in a minute. Uh, Waranchiti, we have Mangu Porti here who can talk more about that. Chakma, we have Bante, uh, Kiti Bante Chakma who knows more about Chakma than I do. And for Newa, we have Sunita, who is absolute specialist in Newa. She is a former Miss Newa, <laughs> and <laughs> she's awesome. And uh, for Sharada, I asked some people from the core Sharada team, who is a group uh, dedicated to promoting the and reviving the Sharada script. Uh, they gave me permission to use all their images and everything, but uh, it's it's late in India, so they. <laughs> They declined <laughs> to join, unfortunately, but that's okay. We'll, we'll still look at the scripts and talk about it a bit. And for Granta, we have uh, Vinod, who is an expert in Granta. He's been helping me immensely, and we've been working a lot for, for two years now on the Noto Granta for Sans and Serif. And he also knows so much more about so many other scripts. So. He can say a word about that too. So let's uh, get started. The, to me, 
the writing systems that we're looking at, especially these writing systems, because they haven't been in consistent use necessarily for you know a long time. For some of these are new, some are newer, and the order I put these in is somewhat chronological. Wancho is the most recent script, most recently created. Warangchiti is the second most recently created. That one also only uh, 70 years or so since it was created. And then after that, we have Chakma been around for hundreds of years, thousand, uh, <laughs> and the, the rest, Newa, Granta, Sharada, these have been around for 1,000, 1,500 years. Or, and, you know, writing systems change, they evolve, they, they turn into different writing systems eventually over time. So it's, there's a lot of fluidity there, but when we look at Unicode in general, we look at a specific point in time. We look at, okay, how can we represent the language now? And how can we represent it? If, it, if we're looking at historical scripts, okay, we also want to represent the historical forms, but uh, it can get pretty complicated. So we'll look at a few of these now and, and I'll show you what I mean. So first one is Wancho. This was added to Unicode 12 last year, and we made the Noto font. There are other fonts too. They originally they were ASCII encoded, not Unicode, because there was no Unicode encoding yet. So a few people made some fonts. They started to use those. Ban Wang Losu, who's the creator of the script, was has been teaching the script working on it for uh, almost 20 years now. And finally it got into Unicode. And so now we're waiting, hope, hoping for it to get into the next Android release, which Google never says exactly when this stuff will happen, but I keep pushing and asking like, can we get this in, can we get this in? We, we want this in sooner rather than later. And here I mention only third party keyboards. I, I say that because in that's a really important factor. If users have to download a keyboard and find it somewhere and figure out how to install it, that's a hindrance to using the script. So when a keyboard is included and you can just choose it on Android or iOS, you can say, add this one, then it's easy. Users can have a font, they have a keyboard and they can just live their life. They don't, don't have to worry about that. So uh, Wancho is a minority group in this area, Arunachal Pradesh, and uh, Longding is where Banwang Losu is. This is Banwang. Uh, too bad he couldn't join. He's really awesome. So he, about 20 years ago, I think, he started to work on the script. He decided that the Wancho language didn't have anything that represented the script right. They were using other scripts and it didn't seem right. They wanted, he wanted his own script, like for Wancho identity, Wancho culture, uh, also for the language, something that fit the language more naturally as far as he was concerned. And so he worked on that for years and years. He's been promoting it, uh, doing talks like this, and here's the book that he wrote, the Wancho script. So he made this book uh, a few years ago, not, not too long ago. And this of course is using non-Unicode fonts because at the time it wasn't yet in Unicode, but it's still a way to promote the script, to teach the script. And last year, so here is last year, February of last year, not even not that long ago is when they released the first primer book. So he created a book teaching how to read and write Wancho. It has all the letter forms, how to write them, has examples of words and sentence and everything for teaching. And it's now being used in schools to teach Wancho script. And this was still before there were any fonts. So this is all still writing by hand using ASCII encoded fonts, not being able to 
fully use uh, current technology. So we're waiting and hoping that soon it will be ready to go. Right now there's no keyboard. So I helped Ban Luang make a couple keyboards. I gave him this Keyman keyboard so he could start writing, typing things, trying, you know, learning how to type in the script because there was never a keyboard before. And I, I worked with him to make sure that the layout was something that made sense for him. And once he, he had that working, he sent me this happy new year message. And since he couldn't send it, since there's no fonts on any computer or phone yet, he just wrote it in the app, took a screenshot and sent this to me, which was, was great to see. And here he is with some other uh, proud Wancho people, it seems. They are, are photographed with our Wancho script inventor, Ban Wang Musu. And people seem to be really happy to have this new script and starting to promote it and learn it and use it more and more. So here's the Noto Wancho as it stands right now. This is what we're waiting, hoping to get into Android soon. But there are all still some other fonts out there too. So there's a little bit of variety going on. These were all ASCII encoded. I converted them all to Unicode and gave them to Craig Cornelius at Google. He made them available on his website. And anybody can now download these as Unicode and use them for a one show script. And soon we'll have more keyboards, hopefully. So, and oh, I, I saw Dan Fanesh is on, on today from Google. He works on keyboards at Google. So get this one going. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, Warang Chiti. The next one is Unicode 7, 2014. So we're already in 2020 and hardly anything happening. And uh, it's a, uh, this is a common theme we'll see in a lot of these scripts. It takes a long time to get things into Unicode, to get them from Unicode into the systems. So this one also, we're hoping it will get into Android this year. Uh, the font existed already for a few years, but for some reason it never got included in Android. And the, the main reason that I got involved with this is because Mangu, who we have today, pointed out problems with the existing font and asked, you know, why is it not here? Why is it not on Android? He's working on promoting the script and making it work. And so I, I saw that and said, oh, okay, we should do something. So I worked with him to get the current font updated. Uh, so this is where, is Mango, are you on? Can you, do you want to say something about this now? He, I think you said he was in New Delhi. Were you in New Delhi? But uh, this is the, the main group of Ho people. He said it was in Jharkhand. Yeah, I'm in New Delhi currently. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, I have some. <laughs> uh, it's, it's too hot in India, so I, I have these fans and everything running. So I just left it mute so that. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Yeah, audio is not, not the greatest. But, uh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll keep going a little. And if you have uh, some more specifics to say, uh, you can jump in. So this is, this is what I'm talking about with the time difference. So this Unicode proposal, 2009, and eventually 2014, it gets into Unicode. And here we are, 2020, still don't really have anything going on. And this is, this is something where I think one, one single person can make a huge difference. And in this case, Mangu is working on this, showing this, making websites, you know, promoting this script. And that's how we got to the point where we are now, where I can say, oh, 
we should get this in. Like, why is this not in there? I'm asking Google, please add this font. And now I, I can tell all of you, like, I, I didn't know this until this one person came along and was able to make their voice heard. Um, so this is, I'll, I'll read you a little bit. This is uh, from, Mango sent me this information, which is Lako Botra is this guy. He's the inventor of the script. And his story is much like the story of Sequoia and the invention of the Cherokee syllabary. So in India, there's a general notion that those languages which do not have their own scripts are not equal to languages that have their own scripts. This notion was quite strong at the time Lako Bodra lived. From what is narrated about him, when he was young, he had heard the explanation of a Sanskrit shloka. And it meant something like, without literature, music, and art, a man is like an animal without a tail and horns. And this idea stuck to his heart. And when he grew up, he vowed to give a script to the Ho people who previously did not have a script of their own. And after the script was made, he got many books printed. This one on the right is his book. And you can see, if you, if you, if you can read, you can see here, if you can see my mouse, I think you can. This is his name. And here it is also on the, on the book. And so let's see, he, uh, he knew the impact religion could have in propagating new ideas. And he was a Christian preacher for some time before the invention. And so he started a new sect with the existing Ho religion so that the script would be uh, associated with that. So basically it started as a kind of religious script for a specific group of people. But uh, today it's also accepted by uh, more than just those people, but there's still, I think there's still people who don't accept it. Is that right? Okay. Well, here's some, here's some examples of printed, which were not Unicode, but there's still some fonts out there. And you can see some old, old books with the script and also, you see here, the, like a lot of places, you'll, you'll find the, the majority script here. We have the Devanagari and then the Waranchiti below. Here on top, we have the opposite. We have the Waranchiti on top. So this is what it looks like now. So this is uh, some tweets from Mangu, which viewing on just a general device, you'll get something like this. You'll get a bunch of boxes because there's no fonts. And now, now we're getting there. Eventually we'll get to the point where we don't have to see those boxes, but take some time. And this was something that comes up over and over when I, I've worked with these different scripts. He told me this getting the script supported on modern devices means a lot and many think it's impossible. And it's totally not impossible. We just need people to understand and people to push for this, especially people who are in a position to do this. People at the larger tech companies who are actually making these devices and making this software. Here's some examples uh, working with Mangu on the updated font. So. I, I asked him questions. He sent me pictures. We, we worked together to make sure that uh, he was happy with the font that he created. And I, I checked to make sure that it, it was working technically, that it would fit with the Noto family and work on all devices properly. And there's not a lot of information out there for learning about the Waranchiti script. Um, there's a little bit, but you'll find some videos like this on YouTube, how to and enable it on your browser and some blogs like, well, this one, we have Mangu's blog here. So if you have the font installed on your system, then you can see the script, but by default, it's not gonna be on. And this is another thing, uh, also Mangu working on this, the 
whole Wikipedia, which right now this is a, the incubator. So not, not the fully released finished thing, but uh, something it's, it's, it's a start. So, okay. That was, did you want to say anything else Mango before we move on? If we can hear. Yeah, yeah, you are right about uh, everything. Um, yeah, uh, as you mentioned, there are, there are a section of people who still uh, kind of um, don't fully accept the Varanchika script. Uh, they still point out certain um, imperfections in the script, and uh, but most of the society has accepted. Uh, as as I had told you earlier, there was a, a conference. Uh, in which all social organizations were called and uh, and the script was decided. So um, now there's no point in going back and calling for another script. So it's, you can uh, call it pretty much accepted by the whole society. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you could join. This is something that was important to me is uh, having actual people who are involved in this. Uh, be part of this conversation because just me speaking is like, who am I? What what do I know about Kenya? Really, that's not it's not my script. That's not my culture. So I'm glad that you could join and uh, give some input. And we'll also have Q and A later. So if anybody has questions about any of these as we go along, then uh, please write it in the, in the Q and A section, which I I'm not looking at the slides. I'm sure Okay, next, next script is uh, Chakma. So we're also going a little bit in order of complexity. So Wancho, extremely simple script. There's nothing complex about it. It's just basic letter forms one after another with a couple marks for different tones. And uh, that's about it. Warang Chiti has a little bit more complexity in uh, historically, there was some stacking where you can have a couple letters stacked on top of others. And eh, there's a little, little bit of that, but not too complex. Chakma has a little bit more than that. So we also have subscript forms like here in the, this says Changma. So that's a, a small ha below the ma. And that requires uh, more shape shaping in the in the computing software, which I, we'll we'll look at that in a second. So this is another one here. Here we see again, 2012. This was added. This is the earliest out of what we looked at so far. It's been in since 2012, and nothing really happening for years until a couple of years ago. We finally got the font into Android and iOS. I don't know who did that or why, but one day I checked, I updated iOS and the Chakma was there. And I thought, okay, so they're missing all these other scripts, but for some reason, somebody added the Chakma. So that was great. And keyboards also don't have the like default keyboard installed yet on something like iOS or Mac, but there are keyboards available. And for Google, there's the Gboard keyboard, which was just added August last year. So Chakma is also another minority group and mostly around the Chittagong Hills tract here. Also Mizoram, Tripura, this, this area. And then of course, elsewhere in the world. I think uh, Kitty Bante, are, are you in Los Angeles? I, it says. Uh, yeah, Zach, well, I mean, uh, I'm in San Bernard, you know, just close. Oh. Okay, great. So yeah, so see, we have Chakma people all over the world, but uh, the the main I think group would, would be in this area, and that's where Bihuti is, and we'll we'll talk about Bihuti in a second. So this script has been around a long time. There's a, but there's still there's not a lot of examples that we see like in archives and such, like this. This manuscript here, this this writing is. I've seen this in various places as the only example of this, of like a, this kind of manuscript. And this one, there's 
there's not a lot. So this isn't the best quality image, but I thought this really pointed out one of the main issues that we want to talk about with a lot of these scripts is here they say our script is our birthright and we have to preserve it. This is something that it's an important part of culture, history, identity, and Chakma definitely so. Here you can see, here's a book that uh, explains some Chakma script and you see here it's written in Bangla script. So this is one thing about the uh, Chakma people, they've been forced for years to use the Bangla script because that's the majority script in the area. And they write Chakma in Bangla script. So even just a few years ago, online, if you look at Facebook or Twitter or anything, you'll see everything in Bangla script or possibly Romanized form because there wasn't anything, there was no way to write it in Chakma yet. And along came Bevudi Chakma, who is awesome. He is working so hard to promote Chakma script, to update things, to get things going. He's been making his own font, updating it daily. He's, he's always working on it. He's always sending emails to everybody he, he knows at Apple, Google, Microsoft, uh, and anywhere that it has anything to do with you know computing software systems keyboards he's a uh, he's working really hard to get this going so here's a couple pictures of him i i had hoped that he could join and talk a little bit but uh there are also some videos you can find him online talking about chakma and he makes a lot of videos showing how to use the script how to install the keyboard how to install the font how to type the typing order there's, there's a lot of, a lot more complexity than the other scripts. Like here you can see this, this word is a lot more complex than just typing one, two, three letters. It has subscript form with a vowel underneath. It has a vowel on the right side, on the top. It has this vowel on the left. Like there's, there's a lot more complexity here. And he's, he's really showing people how to understand that and how to work with that. This is a, when we first delivered the Noto font, he, I told him, okay, we delivered it to Google, we're waiting. And he, he said, okay, we're, we're happy to get it out in the world and happy to use our script. So this is what it looked like at first in some systems. <laughs> Be and it wasn't because of the font. This was because the underlying systems were not yet ready. They didn't understand what Chakma was yet. And that was something that needed to be updated. Luckily, it didn't take too long to do that. So this was, I think, on Apple. And it pretty quickly got updated. So now we get more like this. So if you look at Facebook posts, Twitter, you actually get full, real <laughs> chakma, which is amazing to see. And if you've seen anything that I talked about in the last couple of years at TypeCon or ATypeI or before, I've been talking about chakma for years and it's been a gradual progression from not really working, not really, nobody really using it yet to lots of people using it. It's working well, Bhavuti is, non-stop working on it so it's it's moving along nicely and uh uh kitty kitty can, can you uh say a little more about chakma and what what it means for you hi thank, uh, thank you for having me here so yeah, actually is a uh, is an indigenous group uh, living in bangladesh living in india and also they are also living in, in in Myanmar, so they live in the, like northeastern part of India, and also like Children Hill Tracks in Bangladesh, which is the corner side you saw in the map, and also in uh, like uh, there are some like uh, significant population in Myanmar too. 
So I think we are very, very thankful and grateful to Vibhuti. Like, uh, you know, he came forward for the Chakma language. And the problem was like, we didn't have Unicode, so we couldn't write in social media. So we had like plenty of books written in Chakma script. So they have like, uh, you know, different type of font, uh, fonts. And, uh, you know, the, the first, the, the Chakma script began with, uh, uh, I think, uh, from religious textbooks. So the, uh, maybe a hundred years ago, like a few hundred years ago. So they had, um, you know, written uh, Chakma uh, script in like uh, kind of Buddhist textbooks. And the, those uh, Buddhist priests, they used to chant and also they used to like teach their uh, students. So that's how our Chakma script started. And after that, like, uh, so we are dominated by, you know, Bengali people and the Bengali language. So most of the time we have to use their language and we couldn't uh, like, uh, you know, revive our language. So we built the Chakma is the one who like revived the Chakma script and then he make the life to the dead. Though we, we speak Chakma language every day, but we couldn't, you know, use our script. So now I think everywhere in Facebook and social media and also in uh, uh, like uh, uh, YouTube. And the funny thing, uh, the interesting thing is like, uh, you know, the Tipitaka, which is the Buddhist textbook. And there is a temple in Chidan Hill Tracks. They actually transliterated all the Tipitaka, Pali Tipitaka in Chakma script. So they are about like, uh 60 maybe 50 to 60 books so each book has uh around maybe 300 or 400 pages so they actually read uh wrote the uh, whole tipitaka the buddhist textbook in chakma script so we have books but it is not uh like they use different type of font they they have because the pali uh pali language which is the buddhist uh like they follow the pali like me too i'm trying to translate all those Pali uh, discourses in Chakma language. And also I'm trying to use the Chakma script, like transliterating Pali language of the Chakma language. So that's how we are promoting and also we are encouraging our young generations because uh, most of our young generation, they usually face kind of, when I was in Sri Lanka, at the time I was uh, like asked, are you Bengali or are you like Muslim or something like that? I said, no, I'm a Buddhist. And also we have different language and different uh, script, but they didn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. So now we have like proof, you know, we can show. Yeah, this is the thing. Uh, this is the script. I think this is the one. Uh, so the script you saw like the, the left side that's from, might be from that uh, Buddhist textbook. Yeah. So, yes. they have, so they are more than like maybe 60 or 50 books they have written in Chakma script. Yeah. So, so we are very thankful and I think the people are very, in Bangladesh, what's happening now, they started to teach Chakma language. The problem was now because many of, uh, you know, teachers, they are not aware of the Chakma script. So now they are learning. I have to, they have to learn first and then they have to teach the children. But in Mizoram and Tripura, they already have, you know, Chakma Autonomous District Council in Mizoram. So they have textbooks until maybe grade seven to eight grades for students. And now I'm also here, I'm trying to teach, uh, you know, Chakma script to our people here because we have a small uh, number of people in, in San Bernardino. So we, I'm t trying to teach them Chakma script. Yeah. Hey. hey, thank you. Yeah, this is this is a Pali text. And so this is something that I, I looked at and I saw this letter and I asked Babudi, what is mm -hmm. this? I don't see this anywhere else. And he, he told me to ask some Buddhist monks and we submitted it to Unicode. So now it's part of Unicode as a mm. extra letter that's needed for public text. Yeah. And here's uh, some, some discussion from Bibhuti and also from you. Mm -hmm. uh, recent discussion about, yeah, should, can we add letters that represent these sounds that are foreign sounds maybe in Takma, but can be used to properly represent uh, various words. So it's, it's, it's still going where it's, many scripts are like this. We, we learn new things over time. We keep moving, keep evolving. And uh, yeah, so here's, here's the current Nodo Chakma and then uh, Bibhuti's font also is this one. So 
definitely some big differences in the style, but uh, I, I keep working with Bubudi. Every time he updates, he tells me, make sure Noto Chakma also <laughs> does the same thing. So we keep things in sync. So that's, uh, yeah, okay, thank you. That was great. I think we're kind of running late, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> let's, let's get on to Newa then. This one is uh, from Nepal, and Sunita can talk more about Newa and also Ranjana. So if you want to talk a little, I'll just show some of these slides. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, <laughs> so talking about a Newa script, it is also known as a Nepal Lipi or Nepal script or Prachalit script and also known as Nepal Akshara. Well, it is uh, primarily used by the Newa people and Newa people, that means the indigenous people of Kathmandu Valley of Nepal. So uh, it was also used as the official script of Nepal before. But then there has been a lot of political changes that happened in Nepal. Because of the political history, there is like a long history because of which um, the, there has been a loss of uh, Neva script or Nepal, Nepal script. And during that time, uh, what happened was actually there was um, a system of the political, political system that actually imposed Neva people to actually use Devnagari instead of Nepal script, Nepal script. And because of which people were forced to use Devnagari. And not just that, there were a lot of historical scripts that was written in Nepal script, but people were not allowed to use it. People were even not allowed to keep the documents that was written in Nepal script. And what happened was they were forced either to bury it down or burn it down, or there was also an option that a lot of foreigners took all the documents that was written in Newa and also in Ranjana script to their country. That's why we can see a lot of old uh, scriptures or manuscripts, the documents that was written in the script, we can found it, still found it, find it in University of Cambridge in UK. And um, because of that, there has been a loss of use of uh, Neva script and people were not even able to read it now. The youth generation of today's um, situation, that if they even don't know the existence of Neva script and a lot of people, they don't know how to read it out and how to write it. But still, we're actually trying our best to revive uh, Neva script and also Ranjana script. So um, there has, uh, there is like, you know, a lot of changes, but still the happy or the good thing is before Unicode, there were a lot of Neva fonts, but that was very difficult to type correctly. But now we are very happy that we have Unicode and that is more precise. And for that, I have to thank Jackery and also Anand. He's also listening right now. He has also given a lot of effort to you know, have Unicode in a correct form. And Unicode, not just like Jackery said, like this is, in this age, it's very important to have everything in computer because until analysts, it's, it's not in computer, it's very hard to connect with people for the easy access. So because of Unicode, it has been very easier for a lot of people. A lot of people are using it, but still there are so many things that we need to do it because although we have like Unicode, we also have a problem because um, that can be found in uh, either in you know, Android uh, 9 version and higher, and we, we don't find it in lesser version. And the next problem is we still don't have that in iOS. Because of that, the users are, um, the number of users are as, is not as we have expected. The next thing is, the fund that is found is like, we can have that in the browser-based softwares, but in Nepal, we find a lot of people who use Word, 
and Photoshop and also Excel where we don't, it's harder to, it's um, Nepal, Nepal script is not being able to use it. So, but still we're exploring and teaching people how to use Nepal script and we're also trying our best because of which um, the users of Nepal script is increasing in Nepal. So besides that, talking about the importance, why we need to actually work on that. The main thing is script is not just letter. It's not just letter. It's not just like something, an art. It's also the culture of people. It also represents the human civilization. And especially the Nepal script and also runs on a script, they're related with the Nepal civilization, Nepal settlement, because a lot of manuscript inscription that has been written in Nepal and also runs on a script, they actually reflect the situation of the people and also their civilization and settlement of that time. Beside that, it's also a source of knowledge because a lot of art, architecture, spiritual things, and also manuscripts of Buddhist and also Hindus are written in Nepal script and also in Ranjana script. So if we don't understand that, then that means the history will get lost. There'll be a huge gap between the past and also the present and the future generation will not be able to read it out. So in Nepal, there are a lot of temples where you can see Nepal script, especially Nepal um, Nepal script and also runs at Nepal script. So if you want to know about the, you know, the religious values and also history of those temples, then one needs to know about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. That was, that worked, I think, pretty well. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so much. And, and I actually wanted to share one happy news that um, in Nepal, we also have a policy to have local curriculum, curriculum in schools. And especially in Kathmandu Valley, because Kathmandu Valley is the place, is actually the, you know, Newa people are the indigenous people of Kathmandu Valley. So we're trying that, especially in Kathmandu Valley, the schools and the students should learn Newa script and Ranzana script. We're actually working on that. We're trying to lobby that to the government policy. And we are hopeful that it will be successful. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, there's, there's some more links also for uh, Newa and Ranjana in the, the link that I sent the, with my, my little web page that I made with lots of links. So you can see Sunita and Ananda's talk at A Taipei last year about Ranjana and Look at the Facebook pages for this. You can see on this slide, Facebook Ranjana script. There's a page there. There's a lot, lot of resources and it's definitely awesome. So check it out. And are we, are we running out of time or how, sh how should we? Sharada, we don't have anybody to talk about. I can quickly go over it and then we can get on to Granta if that works for everybody. So, Is that great? Yeah, we've got maybe, we can do maybe 10 or 15 more minutes, but we want to leave time for questions too. Right. Okay, then yeah, let's go through Sharada quickly. And this is, a, this is another one here, same, same thing. Got into Unicode a few years ago, took a while, got onto Android, but the font is not very good. It's, it wasn't done with any input from native speakers, uh, wasn't done with enough research or it, it didn't really, <laughs> didn't really do the job. And people who want to use the scripts immediately said like, what is this? Like, we can't, this is all wrong. Like we, it's missing so many things. So many things are wrong with it. It doesn't, doesn't work for us and so i've been trying for a couple years to get it updated like telling you know the project for noto like let's get this updated and it just hasn't been a priority so uh recently i just i'm working with a guy karan who's in uh in india who's a uh kashmiri who is one of the people on the core Sharada team working to promote Sharada. And 
he is, well, let's go through. He's working really hard to try to get this fixed. And I was chatting with him uh, just a couple of days ago and he said, like, we really want to make sure that the font on Android is correct because that's that will just be installed by default on so many devices around the world. And if it's not right, then that doesn't help anybody. So I've, I've been working with him to get it updated and I was trying to find some other people too. Like just, just recently, I'm, I'm helping him update it. And I'm also looking for other people who can help work on this, get this font updated, make it beautiful, make it work right and get that onto Android as soon as possible, as well as just out there for anybody to use on desktop. Uh, so shout out a script is really ancient script and there's lots of old manuscripts, but no real fonts. So we see here the core Sharada team, they, uh, they let me use all their images to show you this and they, they write things by hand a lot. So here's a lot of different people recently writing by hand, learning to read and write the script. And it's, it's awesome script. So there are, there's a, the group of people working on it and uh, Karan who I've been in touch with has been pushing to get it going. So I, I keep telling him and I feel bad because I, I've been talking to him for a couple of years now. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll tell people, let's get it going. Let's get it updated. And nothing has been happening. So recently I just said, let's just do it. We need to, we can't talk about it. We just need to take action. Like no matter what, somebody needs to do something. So let's do it. And any, anybody here today listening who knows anything about Sharada or is interested in Sharada, like get, get going, let's, let's make more fonts. There's a few Instagram accounts that they told me to share with you. Here's, they do some calligraphy and Sharada script and other handwriting. These links are also in the, in the page that I shared. So this was a couple years ago, they said tag us and get your name written in Sharada script. So people said, here's my name, write it in Sharada and got ton, tons of posts for that. And this is from, this is a couple years ago already. On the left, this is what it looked like on some devices because there's no fonts. And then on the right, it's, it's there, but as Karan said, there are a lot of modifications required. At least they can tweet something in Sharada, but it's, Basically, it's pretty messed up. Like it needs a lot of work. So that's what we're in the middle of doing now. Here's a, he sent me this. Here's a bunch of handwritten forms. Like this is how these forms work. So let's make sure the font understands these forms and does this correctly. This is the current Noto Sharada, which is something, I guess it's better than nothing. And somebody, I don't know who did this, but I found this image, somebody is making a font and this font is actually looking pretty good. It's a great start and I hope that this one gets out there. I mean, we could use this for Noto. So I need to find out who's making this because it's looking better than the Noto font. Okay, so <laughs> let's get on to Granta. Another one, Unicode 7, 2014. Took a while to get into Unicode and get uh, some fonts and now we have, have a few. So this is uh, mostly yeah, South India, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. And this is a, another ancient script. We have tons of palm leaf manuscripts like this. And uh, actually, if, Vinod, if you want to say, say something, you're, you're the, more of the expert than I am. <laughs> I learned the script as an adult as well. So yeah. Uh, Grantha is a very it's a historic script. It's been used in South India for like a uh, thousand years. It's used in India, Sri Lanka, and in Thailand. The Brahmins in Thailand still use Grantha. It's a different variety, so it's used in at least in three different countries. 
Uh, it's one of the scripts that was in use until like early 20th century, but sadly it lost to Devanagari because they wanted Sanskrit, one, one language, one script. And one more reason was like, it was hard to typeset Grantha. It was easy to typeset. It was easy to find typesetters who do Devanagari, who did Devanagari, then people who could do Grantha. So it lost to, they were around like 1930s, 1940s. Then it, there were no like printed books after that. But it, it was one of the earliest Indian duplicate printer around like 18, 1830 was the first book. Yeah, so it got lost and it's not taught in schools. You're supposed to learn it, learn it traditionally, but the line of communication was lost. There's like a tiny, tiny minority of people in Tamil Nadu who use Grantha as part of their uh, religious studies and religious upbringing. So apart from that, it's not widely used, but we're trying to revive, revive it. And after a long, long time, you have a Unicode font for Grantha, which yeah. is a brilliant thing. Uh, yeah. One thing with Grantha is like, it's a very, very complex script. Yeah. It's not that it's the glyphs. The rendering is like highly complicated. We have to make open type work. We have to make Microsoft work. Yeah. It's a pain. Sakari will tell more about that. Yeah. It's, it's not a, just type design, right? Right. It's a lot of technical stuff. And this is, here's one thing I wanted to show you all is Unicode proposals for Grantha are something like this. Uh, for most scripts, there's a proposal and then maybe some revisions. So maybe a couple proposals, they say, here's the script. We want to put this in. These are the, you know, the things that we want to do and it's pretty clear for something like Wancho, very simple. For Granta, we have competing proposals by different people who don't agree on what things mean and how they work. And then they adding more things, adding more, arguing. There's so much stuff. So when I started working on this and looked at all these proposals, I, I was like, what is all this stuff? So it was crazy. I had to read through all of this to try to understand what everybody was saying and what they wanted and what they meant and and then uh, trying to find also people who knew anything about this and luckily I found Vinod who was very helpful and just awesome all the way so we've we've been working together so the Noto Granta is I'm doing like the work on the technical and all this stuff but Vinod is is the consulting for free. Thank you. Like you shouldn't be doing it for free. Like we should be paying you, but the, the setup is also just messed up. Like the way that a lot of this stuff works, you know, we, I'm, I'm doing it as part of my job or now I'm not, now I'm doing it on my own time because I care about it. And I, I would like to pay people also to help with it, but uh, I need, I need the funding too. So I need to figure out where to get funding for this kind of thing to pay people like Vinod or everybody joining today, Sunita and Kitty Bhante and ev everybody should be rewarded financially for all the time and energy spent on these things because we're not just doing a font for um, ourselves, it's for the world, it's for, and it's for a company. This, this font is for Android. And there's a reason that, that Android wants to put everything on there. And that's because they want to, well, for one thing, support every script out there, but that also means everybody can use their devices. So it's, you know, it's not just a one way, uh, benevolent act of, oh, we're so friendly and we want to help everybody. We also want your business. So we'll give you your script. And so I think uh, we need to do more to, to promote all these scripts. Um, here's a few examples of manuscripts. So this is where you, know, you, you can scour thousands of pages of manuscripts, looking for different letter forms, trying to understand different ways of writing, different, uh, you know, different ways that things are written in different locations of different time periods. And once you go through all these and find more and more examples, then you can start working on a font. Then you can, then I, I, I take these screenshots and I'll send it to Vinod and I'll say, what do you think about this? Should we do this form? Well, he sends me that. And he says, we should have this form because historically it has this too. So 
it's a it's a lot of work it's a lot of collaboration and uh, i i think we have something that's pretty good i don't Vinod would be able to say better but we have a like it, uh, it, it's serif a, and a sans serif <laughs> so it's really good we had like one grantha font like a uh, couple of years ago it was it, it was using hijacked uh, the bengali range because we didn't have grantha info back then mm. um, before that in the 90s they tried to make a grantha font it's it looks really ugly but it did it did the job right uh, yeah. uh, but it's it's one of the most beautiful grantha fonts i have ever seen in my life i mean like it's proper and you could get all the forms yeah, i think you had like lots and lots of stylistic sets so people can get like what they want on the screen and yeah i think personally i am very very happy with the font it took a lot of effort a lot of emails <laughs> yes lot of talking uh, it took a lot of my time as well like i had to work you know i work and i had to reply to emails like what should it was it was worth the effort yeah yeah it is and there's, there's so many things to to look at in a font like this this is a uh, one of the most complex writing systems that i i've worked with in digital form like to write all the open type code for this kind of font was pretty crazy there there are a few other scripts out there that are also very complex and this was definitely up there so to get to get this kind of these forms with the stacking and the vedic marks and there's like it's a lot there's a lot of stuff going on but it's a uh, it's awesome so thank thank you vinod thank you uh, for making this meet so okay so now what well that was i went a little longer than i hoped so i'm going to stop uh, screen sharing now and now i guess we can go on to q and a because we had a lot of stuff that we looked at and <laughs> What what do we what do we got in the Q and A? Okay, let's see. I'm going to pick the ones that have been upvoted. So people, put your questions in Q and A right now if you have something you want to ask any of the panelists today. So we have a question here from Keo uh, who says, "I want to know if there's a type specimen book for these Noto fonts." Mm, nope, not that I know of. There's just the uh, there's a website which is also horribly out of date and uh, should be removed soon, I think, and will be basically everything will be should be merged with Google fonts. So if you go to fonts.google.com, it will be in there, but it's not yet. So it's kind of a it's an ongoing insane <laughs> project. <laughs> but yeah. So no, no, uh, no, yeah, no type specimens for these. Just, uh, Short answer no, huh? Boo. Okay, let's see. We've got another one here. Uh, what's the relationship between Granta and Tamil? Forgive me if I mispronounced anything. It's Tamil, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Even Tamilians can't do the real sound. So, all right. Uh, so the modern Tamil script is basically is a derivation of the Granta script. So Tamil script at some point had like two different scripts, and that one king decided, like you know what. we just you have to use one script so he took the grantha script kind of subsetted it and adopt, adopted few glyphs from another script it's kind of a hybridized script that was origin but then it it took its own organic root for the modern tamil yeah so for like for people who know tamil script or familiar with it looking at grantha like i showed it to people who knew something about tamil and they and they said oh the tamil and i said no 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 and they're like huh isn't isn't it tam like they because so many of the forms are similar or some are shared they're exactly the same and then but there are the points where that are totally different so when you see those you you know like you look at a body of text you can really you can easily figure out oh that's totally grand i think it's because of the typesetting yeah. handwritten forms are similar than the, when they typeset grantha right they chose to standardize the different forms and when they type the tamil and that's one of the reasons for the variation and if you see the inscriptions right the scripts are like just mixed you can't tell them apart they're mixed left right and center because mm -hmm. people could and they had like two this scripts it's a beautiful tradition of like by scriptural traditions but it's yeah. a long history yeah <laughs> nice 
Let's see what else we have here. Uh, there's an anonymous attendee who asks, I'm assuming they're asking Zachary, does your role at Adobe still relate to adapting fonts like this as it did at Google? Not exactly. So my, I'm, in, I'm supposed to be working mostly on CJK fonts in Japan. And so I'm working on CJK, but also in my spare time, I'm doing a lot of this stuff. So Noto things like at night, mostly, I just like keep working on Noto because it's, it's something that needs to be done. There are things, things that need to be fixed, things that need to be updated there. Are, and especially the, the scripts, like some of what we looked at today that I've already been working on for a while. So I'm familiar with them. And so I want to keep updating those and also trying to hopefully teach more people. Like it's well, one reason to do something like this today is show more people about these things and try to get more people involved. Okay, let's see. We got one more, a couple more questions um, from Harant. We have uh, Zachary, big fan of your work, as you know. And the question is, the more precarious a script, the fewer type designers it has or can be trained. Who should make fonts for those scripts? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think I was just actually talking about this earlier with somebody. Like, there are some scripts don't actually have, like, a native speaker. Like, you know, historic scripts can also be very complex. And who, who should do those? Like, somebody, either way, you need to be, uh, you need to do the research. You need to really work hard. It's, it's not easy to do any of this stuff. It takes a lot of research and a lot of work to understand any of this at any level. But it's important also to find uh, different sources, different people, and just, uh, you know, share, share the knowledge and also understand your own bias, your own input, like me as a Western American white male, like what do I know about a lot of these scripts? I, I know that I bring my own bias to that and that's why I hope to learn from other people like our great guests today. They've taught me so much and it's, it's awesome. So I think uh, who, who should make these fonts is, well, whoever can. Who, whoever can do the work and do the research and do something is the most important part. And also something I think is important to think about is type design is a luxury, but fonts are a necessity. So we're looking at, you know, type design in general, we think of like, oh, we have all these new typefaces, all these new cool styles and stuff, but sometimes we just need a font. We need something that works. We need something to communicate it doesn't matter if it's ugly or beautifully designed or like hopefully it's beautifully designed but if it works that's the most important part if somebody can communicate with this font that's way more important so who makes that font whoever can make it get it out there get something going because for a lot of these scripts we have nothing like we have basically one font or zero fonts or something so we need to keep pushing more and more and also like uh, include, include more people, include people who are native to these scripts and help them learn and be able to make their own also. All right, thank you. Um, we have another question from Brian who says, definitely should find a way to compensate these designers putting in the work to get these scripts into Noto. I'm sure Google will contribute, but are there any other efforts being made to help out these designers? Mm, other efforts, I'm not sure. There's actually on the alphabets post that I mentioned at the beginning, there are some links in there also to uh, resources or to groups helping to promote uh, diversity underrepresented groups. There's There are some things going on and uh, Last year, A Type I, for the first year, they had the diversity fund, which helped bring a few people. We brought Sobichet from Cambodia, Senko from Laos. We brought Ananda and Sunita from Nepal. And so they were able to 
help pay for these people to come join the conference. And this was, I, I invited Ananda before I knew about that fund. And I said, I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to get the money. I don't care. Like, I want you to come to this conference and share what you know about these scripts because that's your, this is your script. Like I, I shouldn't be the one to share it if you can do it. And luckily a type, I had a fund and we got people there and it was, it was amazing. It, it's a little, it's a start. I think there's a lot more to be done and a lot more that we can do, especially with a meeting like this. It's great because we can have people from around the world and sorry, sorry to everybody, to Sunita, it's so late there, but <laughs> thank you for staying up so late. It's like 2 a.m., right? <laughs> so you and, and Mangu, it's so late. Okay, we got a couple more questions if you guys can stay up uh, 10 more minutes. Um, actually, five. Let's see, we have one from uh, Venkatesh that says, having a great resource for different scripts in India itself how can one play a part in spreading the awareness? Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, I, I mean, having, having websites is definitely helpful. Having like a lot of what we looked at today, I, I found information on various websites. I found people posting things and that's how I knew like, oh, this person is part of this community. And I contacted and said, hey, can, can you help me understand this so I can help with this? So, I mean, websites and, or videos like this too, having an, anything that's out there that public that anybody can see. Like just in the last few years, we've seen a lot more archives come online for various libraries around the world and archives with manuscripts. From, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there, which uh, I, I should have put more links in the, in my page there, but there's there's so much to look at. It's it's getting better and better. Let's see. We have one more question here um, uh, from uh, Michael. Let's see. It says, "What was the context of the rally with the banner that said our script is our birthright?" That one, I'm, I'm not sure uh, exactly what it was. I, I just found that like probably a couple of years ago and it looked, it was, it was a good image showing Chakma script in use and also showing like, oh, these people are trying to <laughs> say something. And so I, I don't know what it was. I, I could probably find it. Okay, let's see. We have, uh, let's do two more questions, then we're really going to have to call it a day. Um, let's see. Hi, from Kalapi. Uh, hi, Vanad. Uh, thank you for all your work on Grantha. I know of an effort in Chennai by a major publisher to include Granthum characters to Tamil in order to reduce the ambiguity for new learners. Unfortunately, open type in its current state does not support in to operability between the two encodings. What are your thoughts on mixing Grantam with Tamil as a new hybrid fork, so to speak? All right. I was working on it recently. Basically, I created a font like a week ago and sent it to Zakari. So I actually created a font that mixes Tamil and Grantha characters, but using the Malayalam encoding because the open type open in Unicode doesn't allow like mixing the two blocks. Uh, we have to write a proposal uh, to make it work which have to work on it. It's also a very politically hot topic. I don't want to get no, into hot water, but it, it's a bit tricky, but uh, it should be done at least this year or later year, right? I should write a proposal to the Unicode Consortium uh, requesting script extensions. But once you do that right, we have to wait for the implementations. They'll take a couple of years. Uh, but as of now, I have a font. If you want anything, just send me an email. I'll send the font over. Fantastic. Um, all right, one last question. Also, we see that uh, Sunita's Behance link is not correct. So if Sunita can uh, change that. Um, then we see, is there an open repository or repo with issues that can be addressed by type designers who want to help? 
Great last question. Yeah, that one, yeah, Jeff responded to that. So on, on the GitHub website, there's, there's a, you can open issues there and really like, that's, that's a good place for, to just open any issue. It doesn't even matter if it's like somewhat vague or something, you're just like, hey, say something. Cause then I, I see that, even though like I'm not officially associated with the project, I, I see it and I try to respond. I talk to Google anyway. Um, on other things too. So I, I try to make sure that they are aware of anything that comes up. So just post on there. Fantastic. Okay, I got to thank everybody so much for staying up super late and joining us. And uh, thank you, Zachary, for convening this great crew of, um, of specialists for this conversation.